How far can your aircraft actually glide in the event that you had an engine out? Six to one, eight to one, 10 to one, 15 to one? Have you ever tested it with the engine off? Well, if not, this may be for you. I'm gonna go up and I am going to pull the mixture on my RV6A, shut the engine the whole way off and see what my actual, no kidding, engine out glide distance would be. In this case, with the prop spinning, but no fuel going to the motor. I wanna do this ahead of going out to Oshkosh because I just wanna know what my glide ratio is. So when I'm flying out there, I can program it into four flight and I can see a little bit more accurately and have Okay, so I'm gonna cut into the video right here because what I just showed you is something I started to do and I started actually editing it and I had recorded it quite a while ago, actually a little bit before Oshkosh. And then when I started putting the footage together, I really started to go deep into, as I guess any YouTuber would do, internet sources, looking at some of the data that Cafe had, looking at stuff on Vans Air Force. And people had numbers that were wildly different from what I found. And before I actually put this together, I thought to myself, I'm gonna go run all these tests again, maybe put a little bit more rigor around them, fly a little bit longer profile, be a little bit more precise, check everything out because what I had was so far off from what people were saying on the internet. And specifically, I was getting a number of a glide ratio of about eight to one, give or take, I'll get into specifics in a little bit. And a lot of people were using numbers like 11 or 12 to one. And that was far enough off that I was like, all right, I need to go take a look at this and figure out what's different about what I'm doing. Did I do something wrong? Or are a bunch of people out there using this super high glide ratio and if they actually had an engine failure, they're gonna have a bad day when they come up short thinking they can make it to an airfield. So with that, I'm coming back and I'm doing this again. So last time I ran a profile multiple times, I ran it at VX, VY, and Best Glide, which is generally right between those two. And I figured out that, yeah, the Best Glide number is my Best Glide. That was where I was getting the best numbers. But again, I was right around 8, 8.1, 8 8.2, 8 8.3 to 1, not 11 or 12 to 1, not even 10 to 1. And so this time I'm going to go out, I'm going to head up to a, an airfield a little bit south of me here, and I'm going to fly a profile with a full 6,000 feet at an airfield, both directions, and get some measurements again. A quick note here, I probably should have brought this up earlier. Why do we care about glide performance? And why is it so important to actually know the glide performance with the engine actually off instead of just, you know, pulling it back to idle? Well, essentially, the first part is if you lose your engine in a single engine aircraft, you want to know how far the aircraft can glide and still get to a safe landing area. I think this is actually maybe more useful information now with modern avionics and modern pieces of software like ForeFlight. So here's what ForeFlight looks like. The turquoise ring is what they call the glide advisor. And this actually shows you where your aircraft can glide to based on the terrain around you, your altitude. I think it does a little bit of calculation for you to slow to your best glide distance that you program in. And once you program in what your glide ratio is, it will actually base this ring on that glide ratio. So it's pretty important. So if you have a glide ratio that's too high, that ring will become larger. And if that ring is too large, it will look like you can make it to an airport or a suitable area that you actually can't make it to. So this does make a difference. And as far as having the engine actually off, when I was doing this test and I pulled the mixture all the way back and then made sure that the uh, engine was not being powered anymore. If you even have a little bit of fuel going in, you're getting just a little bit of thrust from the propeller, and that's really giving you a false indication of how far the aircraft can glide. Okay, so that's why glide distance matters. There's a whole lot of other calculations you can look into to figure out your, uh, your best glide performance, which, spoiler, it's generally considered right in between your VX and VY. But anyway, back to the video. So I'm climbing up now. I'm going to go up to 9,000 feet. That'll give me a full 6,000 feet to descend. I'll descend from 9,000 down to 3,000 feet. That'll give me a little bit of a buffer. And so with that, 6,000 is pretty close to a nautical mile, so that'll just kind of mentally make the calculations a little bit easy to kind of watch it happen. But I'm expecting to go about 8.5 miles uh, forward during that descent. Uh, but again, some of the... Uh, the other folks are thinking it's going to be around 11 to 12 miles. And I'm going to run this both directions. So I have a line drawn out uh, about 9 miles either side of the airport I'm flying to. That's kind of my safety airport. 
That way, in the event that something did go actually wrong, I know I can glide to that airport, but little risk of that. Okay, we're coming up on 9,000 feet, 400 feet to go for that. Engines off. Okay, I'm not going to go through all these tests, but you kind of get the idea. I did this multiple times. I think I totaled about 10 runs at 83 knots, which is my best glide. I also did runs at 70, which is my VX, and I did runs at 96, which is my VY. I did all of those both directions. At 83 knots, I did 10 total runs. And of those 10 total runs, the average I had was 7.8 to 1. I will note that I had some that were uh, around 8.3, 8.4. And some of the lower ones, I had a pretty stiff crosswind. And if you kind of understand how the air masses work, a crosswind will actually still decrease your total glide, but I won't get into all of that detail. Now, how did I do the calculations in case anybody thinks I did this wildly wrong? I took the miles traveled. I multiplied it by 6,076.12 to convert the nautical miles into feet. And then I took the feet traveled divided by the altitude lost. So that's how I got to these glide ratios. From there, I can very comfortably say that the glide ratio for my RV6A is in the neighborhood of eight. Now I'm gonna program it in, and I have it programmed in at 7.5 for a little bit of added buffer, again, a big crosswind, some other things could impact your glide ratio, but that's what I got. So. If you're rolling around and you don't know what the glide ratio is in your plane and you have something, say, more than seven in, uh, I would urge you to consider doing some testing to see if that's accurate. And I'm not recommending anybody else go out there, turn the engine off, and actually do engine out testing. Uh, I think the lawyers, if I had them for this <laughs> YouTube channel, would probably advise against me advising anybody to do that. But what I am saying is you should have some way to understand a little bit deeper what your glide ratio is if it's something that you actually want to program in and would consider that during an emergency. One other quick note, uh, you can see it a little bit in here. I didn't really zoom in, but the ratio here, my glide ratio, my best glide ended up with a nose low attitude, a velocity vector nose low. So not just the uh, plane of the aircraft, but actually where my glide is moving of about seven and a half degrees nose low, which is a pretty steep approach if you've ever done one at that ratio or at that uh, at that angle. So something to think about, you're pretty nose low in these. And uh, that's it. You think I did something wrong? Let me know. If you've got a glide ratio that's something like 10 to one in your RV, maybe wanna go take a look at that. I don't think it's accurate.